Today we're going to talk to you about expanding flexible foams. These are two-part polyurethanes and when they mix together they rise up and they'll form different densities of flexible foam. Foam is described in density in cubic feet, pounds per cubic feet. We offer four different grades of the flexible foams, starting with our Flex Foam 300, which is 300, 3 pounds per cubic foot. You can see it's nice, soft. Our Flex Foam 600, which is a little more dense. Flex Foam 800, which is 8 pounds per cubic foot. And I need to say also that the Flex Foam 600 is 6 pounds per cubic foot density. And then finally, our highest one, which is the BA100. Now this is going to be about an 8 to 10 pound per cubic foot uh, density foam, but the unique thing about the, this, the BA100 is it's called an integral skin foam. It, that means that the outside skin has much more integrity than these other three foams if you're needing that. Now we've cut this open to kind of demonstrate that. I'm going to show you. And that's what it looks like on the inside. And we'll get a close up here in a second to kind of show you. It's flexible yet with a really nice uh, continuous skin structure on the outside. Now these things start their life off as two thin liquids. You mix them together and then they'll rise up and they're ready to go in maybe 10 to 15 minutes they're fully cured. These work excellent in making uh, props or custom fitting uh, impact cushioning. Uh, they, these are open cell foams so I wouldn't recommend them for flotation. But uh, we do have some coatings that can be put on ancillary to make these uh, somewhat waterproof but they are open cell. And we're going to show you how to mix some of these things up and how they work out. We want to demonstrate how to mix up these flexible foams. As I mentioned earlier, they come in two distinct entities, part A and part B. And they're going to be mixed one to one by weight or volume. You're going to have to read the label to see which way they're mixed because they're not all the same. The A component doesn't need any pre-mixing, but you do need to stabilize these things room temperature to get the best foam possible. If the liquids are too hot, it's going to give you a foam that's off spec, or if they're too cold, it's going to give you a foam that's too dense, okay? Again, too hot, it's going to be too light a foam. Also, there's something called free rise and compressive density. Free rise is if you put it into a mold and you don't do anything to compress the foam, it rises up, and that's how we normally quote the densities to you. However, you can artificially drive the density up by putting a little bit more resin into a mold and then putting a board or something on top to compress the mold uh, the foam so it'll dry the density up. This actually improves the integrity of the outside skin on the lighter foams. Today we're going to do our Flex Foam 300 and we're going to measure out this one's equal by volume one to one. Into a clean bucket we've already measured uh, one part of the component B. But before we did that we stirred the component B with a flat spatula. Not a square spatula but a flat spatula. Doesn't take very much because the B component will separate over time. And again, it gives you uh, different types of foam if it does that. The B, or the A material needs no pre-mixing, but again, these need to be stabilized to, say around room temperature 72 degrees. We've uh, pre-measured out our component A. The component B is already in the bucket, and so we're gonna pour that in there. We're gonna scrape the component A into our mixing bucket. Now the time starts whenever A and B touch, so there's no time to stand around. So we want to go ahead and mix that. And go around the outside with my flat spatula and mix it. And I can look in the pail and I can see swirls of unmixed material and it doesn't take very long to get them together. And I have a clean bucket that we're going to use for a demonstration mold. Use a little silicone spray. Don't flood it, just a little bit. And I'm going to pour this into my mold. Okay, now it's going to start rising up, so I want to go ahead and clean off these utensils. And we're going to show you with uh, what it's going to look like here. We're actually going to pull out a nice plug of cured material to show you. So we're just going to wait and watch this foam come up. Again, two three minutes it's going to be fully formed in about 10 to 15 minutes we're going to take it out of the mold and we're going to show you what you get as i mentioned earlier we have different types of foam one of the foams that is very popular is a integral skin or self-skinning foam our ba100 kind of fits that bill this is a small uh, beaker sample that we've cut in half to kind of show you uh, 
what you get with that nice uh, skin formation. And as another example, this is what one of our customers has molded out of it. This is a child seat. It's a safety seat. And as you can see, it was poured, has a very nice skin, yet it's soft and ergonomic for children. So what we've done is we've going to show you how to mix this up. So this particular material is one to one by volume, and we've measured out equal parts of part A and part B. And we're going to mix those in a clean bucket with a flat spatula. And we're going to scrape the contents of the beakers into it. Now, you need to be fairly close on your ratios. If it says by weight, do it by weight. If it says by volume, do it by volume. And you like to be plus or minus about 5% on that. If you mix too much A, you're going to get a foam that's going to end up being a little harder than Target. Too much B, you're going to end up foam that may be a little softer and stickier than Target. So you want to stay with it. Also, for small volumes, spatulas are fine, but for larger volumes, you'd like to use a uh, electric drill and a jiffy mixer. If you don't know what a jiffy mixer is, you can go to our website and we're going to show you what that is. And we'll take a uh, clean bucket, a little spray release, because we're going to show you a demonstration mold. Pour our mixed ingredients in there. Mix it one more time. It's always best to use two buckets because in real life, if you were pouring a mold, this would be the bucket that you'd pour into the mold. This one we're just going to demonstrate and pull a plug to show you what the foam looks like. This is free rise density. The foam is not going to be compressed against itself. And here comes the foam to kind of show you what's going on. But in most cases, when people mold parts, they're going to uh, take this foam and compress it back to force the density up and to increase the integrity of the skin. So this has come up, it's fairly fast, and it's just about risen to its maximum free rise density again. But we just want to show you for effect of what the foam does. The neat thing about it is it contours, molds around it, and allows you to take shapes and to make flexible objects at them that are, can be used actually for production items. So we're going to take it out of the mold. We've put a little release in there. We're going to work it around the edges and then start tugging on it. And it looks like it's trying to come out. And there it is. And there's the part. And you can see it has some, the skin is uh, compressed in some areas, in other areas it's not. But if we had back pressured the mold on the way back up, the foam, that we would you get a perfect skin every time. Now this, is, this material is a little different than our lighter weight foams because it does have the ability to form a great skin. Just taking a knife, like a butcher knife, I'm going to show you how that all works. I'm going to carve into it. There it is. Nice, flexible, but it's open cell foam, but with a really nice skin on the inside. Silicone molds work great for this material, but if you don't have silicone molds, urethane molds or other molds will work great if, as long as they're sealed and you use a silicone release agent with that. The color. The color, we have about 12 different colors that you can add to it. With no color, the foam is a snow white. But uh, we've added a, just a simple orange pigment to this at about 2% of the total weight of the material. And you can see it gives a, a real vibrant color. Okay, you can see the compressibility of these foam. This is our Flex Foam 300. Very compressible, very lightweight. And our heaviest foam, the BA100, Integral Skin Foam. And we also have foams that are in between, the Flex Foam 600 and the Flex Foam 800, so it kind of walks up in density. And these are some great products from industrial polymers. And for more information, I want you to visit the website and you can download all the data sheets on these.